Hi guys. All right. So we have a question. A friend. She's in a relationship that's not good for her, but feels like she can't leave. All right. Firstly, the fact that when a person gets into an abusive relationship like that, or that's not healthy for them, the longer they stay, the more the the relationship dynamic starts to become a lifestyle. And what happens is that when we stay in something that's unhealthy for too long, we start to learn how to cope and adapt to that. Because biologically, we are designed to cope and adapt. So now she's probably already start to build coping mechanisms around staying in this relationship, and 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 surviving in it instead of thriving. She's surviving. But we tend to also become creatures of habit, so we tend to get comfortable with the with the with the coping mechanisms and the habits that we form within that, and that becomes our new place of comfort. Even though consciously it makes us feel uncomfortable, there's a sense of familiarity. There's a sense of a relatable emotions and knowing how to deal with in that set of negative circumstances. So it's easier sometimes to stay in negative circumstances that where you feel there's a set pattern in place already for you how to act and react and cope and deal with it, which normally is to go into the numbness state. And the more you go into that numbness state, what happens is that your barometer and your threshold for dealing with abuse becomes higher and higher and higher and higher. And so the abuse or the unhealthy aspect of the relationship can become worse and worse and worse. And you're so numb that you're not really realizing and seeing that this barometer is actually starting to pour over to a point where it's unacceptable. And also another question to ask here in what I would be looking at for this person is to look at what is this person or what did in the beginning? What did this person allow you to feel that you couldn't feel on your own without them? Another question to ask and to look at here is with this person, who is this person giving you love from that you could never have received from in your past? Meaning, sometimes people hold on to people because they feel a sense of fulfillment of, you know, unmet needs from mom or from dad, from a friend or from someone really important in their life. And they don't realize that they subconsciously made that click, that they made that association because this person, some aspects of them are resonating with them. They, they relate to this person that reminds them of a mother or are of a father where there's wounds, where there's unmet needs, where there's there's aspects that needs to be healed and so subconsciously they, they see this as an opportunity as a connection where they can now finally have those needs met but they're trying to have you know motherly or parental figure and, and love and needs met from a person that is projecting perhaps the same emotional unavailable traits and characteristics now sometimes also what can happen here is it depends if your friend also, and I don't know if this is the case, it depends if your friend is just meowing as well. We need to be very clear on that. I say meowing because I'm sure that if you have a cat or that you've known or seen a cat, sometimes they just meow. They don't want, if, they don't want food. They, they don't want to be picked up. They don't want to be held, nothing. They just sit there and they just meow. Now, we also sometimes need to do that. And that's through the form of complaining. So which can also be very healing and cathartic just to feel heard, just to feel I am being listened to. So be very direct. And my friends, they know that I'm very direct. I will actually ask, do you just need to be listened to or do you, are you asking me for help? Because it's so emotional sometimes to have a friend go through a, you know, a relationship that you can see is not healthy for them. And you sit there and you're like, oh my God, how do I deal with this? What, what do I do with this? You know, how do I respond to this? So make very clear, you know, make very sure and clear that you understand what her needs are. How does she want you to support her? And there's a very high chance that she might say, I don't know. And if that's the case, then you have to let it be. You have to let it be in the sense where you can respond to her and say, okay, um, it's okay to not know, but I'm going to be here for you and I will listen to you until you feel clear on what you feel you need the next step to be. Okay, so maybe just hold the space for your friend then. And, and I know this is hard, but try not to get emotionally involved because ultimately she is now in this situation. You are there to support her. But it's like, you know, if you, you can take a horse to the water, but you cannot 
force its head down to drink if it doesn't want it or if it's not ready for it. And people tend to be the same. Because if you're going to push her to trying to get out of that relationship and she's not ready and she does leave, there's a very high chance that she's going to resent you and blame you when she starts to go through the stages of grief. Okay, and you don't want to be the person that's blamed, even though you did the right thing to try and help. It's not worth the backlash and how it's going to backfire onto you. So be very mindful of that, of how you handle this, of how you deal with this. And be a facilitator, hold the space and be present until she can give you a clear answer of how she would like to move forward. And the last word of advice if she chooses to leave the relationship, I would highly, highly recommend that you ask her to work with one of the practitioners and not with you because it's going to become extremely draining on you to be there for her and to be a practitioner facilitator for her. It normally ruins a friendship. It changes the, the relationship dynamic normally permanently. There's a very, very high chance of that happening. I've seen it hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times. It's happened to me. So please take my word of advice that you handle this very delicately in that sense and, and you know, support her and see her in, in a form and in a way where she's strong, where she can do this rather than see her as a victim or someone that's stuck because the way that you see someone greatly influences their emotional state. Okay, it greatly influences their emotional state. And so what you want is for her to feel empowered with your support. So see her as someone that is strong. See her as someone that is capable. However, they're just temporarily confused. They're just temporarily off the path and just keep holding that space for her. All right, great questions, guys. Thank you. Hi guys, thank you for joining me and remember to grab your copy of Metaphysical Anatomy on Amazon 679 Medical Ailment and I also wrote about the psychosomatic root causes of that and I'm spoiling you because I even added key points for you to start looking at important questions that you can ask yourself to start improving your quality of life and also remember to catch me on Instagram Yvette Rose one with the digit one and Metaphysical Anatomy on our Facebook fan page. Bye guys.